Hey everyone, it's Dirk here from HA Photography. I'm thrilled to be here with you again and thank you once again to the Vancouver Island Regional Library for uh, providing me this opportunity. So the last three weeks uh, or the three sessions modules we've been talking about composition, we've been talking about lighting and something else that's totally I've forgotten about now but uh, what I was hoping we could do today was actually just bring those all together in a practical sense. Uh, so today we're going to talk about some lighting challenges that we talked about in the last module and how we can work our way around them, um, as well as some compositional components. Um, the other thing that I really want to focus on today is trying to get your camera off the uh, aperture or program modes and try to actually work with your camera in manual mode. And why is this important? To me, I think we learn more about how to use light and how to um, shape light, shape light, light <laughs> the way we want to uh, when we actually take full control of the camera. Uh, the camera sensors are really good, and uh, uh, but they don't always figure out every situation. So um, I encourage you as much as you can to put your camera in manual mode. Uh, the great thing is now is we get to see the results right away on and we can adjust. So. Um, so we're going to get started here. Uh, I have my lovely daughter Keita there and uh, I was talking previously about one of my favorite types of light which is window light and uh, we have uh, a lovely uh, patio door with a nice big glass that brings in beautiful light and uh, I wanted to show you how we can capture that. I've got my camera set up here. Um, I personally like using a tripod. I just find it's, uh, it allows me to compose and I can walk away and adjust things like shirts and stuff if they're, uh, if they're wrinkly or, uh, and I know that my camera and uh, all my settings are where, they, where I last left them. So uh, getting right into it, um, we're gonna have a look at Keita and she's already got some great light on her. Uh, it might be a little contrasty. Um, and so what I will ask Kata to do is just to turn her nose a bit more towards the light. And look at that, we now have some light in what is her left eye. And I think that is really pretty. And then so what I'm going to do after I've gotten my settings all down is uh, now we talked about composition and the rule of thirds. Currently I have her sort of smack dab in the center. And I'll show you that image in a sec. Um, but I want to actually have her off just to the uh, uh, off to one of the third um, sections, the grids. So I'm going to ask Kate to just to move a little bit over this way. There we go. Even though I see that uh, that light switch, I'm not going to worry about it. And then she's already perfect, and she knows that. We're just going to have her turn nose a bit more towards. There we go. And she's going to pretend that she likes me just a little bit. Just there we go. And so what we're seeing here. Oh, she's a natural, isn't she? Uh, what we're seeing here is, if, if I may, when you have your head, we get this little bit of light in the secondary eye. And I think that is just such a beautiful, um, it just makes for beautiful lighting and composition. And now when she turns her nose this way, it gets very sort of um, much more contrasty. So you can always just have your, your subject turn their head just a little bit to the light. Um, makes for, for beautiful compositions. And um, other than that, we'll just take a few, and I will post some of these. You'll see these up here, but um, beyond that, I've got Keita in, uh, maybe I'll even get her to go this way, just a little bit more. Just a touch more, please. Thank you. That's good. And, uh, and a really good trick, as opposed to always reminding people to turn their head towards the light, is just tell them to turn their feet towards the light. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, the rest usually falls into place. But in this case, we'll just ask Kate to just to turn her nose a bit more towards the light. There it is, right there. And it's such a subtle movement. Um, and it, it makes for, uh, for all the difference. Um, this wraps up the portion of the window light. So I encourage you to get your cameras and uh, find someone you want to photograph and find some beautiful window light and put your camera in manual mode and explore and have fun. Okay, I spoke previously about the importance of having your camera in manual mode, and the reason it's important is sometimes lighting conditions will be such uh, that it will tell your camera lies, and so you need to think beyond that. 
Um, and here's a great example. I have Keita backlit, and uh, so there's bright light coming in behind her. And if I read the readings in my camera, uh, I'm going to take a shot here, and it's, um, as you're going to see, it's very dark. And so I need to think, okay, there's a bright light source, but my main subject is Keita, and I want her to be properly lit. So I'm going to adjust my exposure and Kate is going to be really happy that I adjusted this exposure. And, <laughs> and you're going to see here how much better the results are. So you won't necessarily get those results uh, by having your camera in a program mode, being it aperture, shutter, uh, or full program mode. So work with your camera in manual mode and you'll get better results. It may take a little bit, but you'll learn lots more and your pictures are going to be awesome. Okay, so we're outside. It's a gorgeous summer has finally arrived, thank goodness. Uh, it's almost high noon, which means the sun is up as high as it's uh, going to be. And although, although um, you know, we need the sunlight to provide us light to photograph, uh, direct sunlight can provide some big challenges. And uh, so I want to show you some sort of bad examples and some easy ways to correct them. Um, so again, we have the lovely model Keita. And, you know, even before she started, she was like doing this because uh, she's got sun glaring in her eyes. And you can see here there's some dark shadows under her eyes. There's no light in her chin area. Um, so not the most flattering light. So I'm going to I'm going to quickly take a shot and show you what that looks like. Yeah. And uh, Keita, try not to squint. I know. Right. It's so hard. It's because the sun's. And so there's a couple things to do. Um, these are really cheap. These are the five-way reflectors. If you have someone with you, we don't need all those. Um, so, yeah, sorry, we'll just move that. There we go. Um, one thing you can do is if you have someone with you, you can put them. Now, all of a sudden, look at the light on that. I, obviously, I can't take the picture, but you can see. Uh, is that easier to also look? <laughs> you lie, it's supposed to be a little easier, um, but that's all good. So that's one thing you can do if you've got someone with you. If you don't have that option, if it's just you, um, there's something that's really simple that you can do. So I'm going to go exactly the opposite side and turn it. Kate is going to turn around. No, no, don't move. Don't move. You stay there. Uh, so now I've got the sun directly behind Kata. and. What this is doing, I'm just going to quickly compose this. Um, what this is going to do, now look look at her face. It's all one tone. We don't have any dark shadows. Uh, we actually have a little bit of hair light, which is nice. And are you squinting? Only a little bit. Only a little bit. And it's a really bright day. So she was supposed to say no. This is how good of an assistant I have. Uh, but uh, the reality is it's going to be much easier to look at the camera. So I'm going to come back here now and take a shot. And now we talked about having your camera in manual mode. Because Kate is going to be a little darker than, than the background. Um, and as you can see in the photograph that there's a fair bit of grass, which is really bright. Again, we need to be mindful uh, to put the appropriate exposure in. Your camera's going to tell you an exposure, but it's not going to be accurate. So put it in manual mode, take a shot, and I'm also going to put Keita again in that one-third quadrant, sorry not quadrant, I can't say that, uh, into that uh, grid. grid. Thank you. That is my director and and uh, and, uh, and videographer Ronnie Faganello. Um, so now I've got Keita in that one-third quadrant. Oh look at that. She looks, that looks great and uh, we'll show you those in a sec. So there's one example, actually two, if you consider the, the um, reflector, on what you can do if you're in a difficult lighting situation. What you may have to do, if the sun is a little lower in the sky, you may need to shelter your lens a little bit. So you can even just use your hand and make sure that you don't have any direct sunlight coming into your lens. But this is a great way to get nice portraits of people um, and, uh, and have nice even light on their face. Uh, we're going to show you another example uh, in just a sec. Okay, so we're still outside uh, and it's still very bright. Uh, in the last section we talked about simple methods about turning your back towards the sun. There's another method that you can do. So currently we have, we'll just wait for that to go by. 
Wow, they need a muffler. Okay, um, so currently we have Keita in, again, we've got shadows here. She's having a hard time opening up her eyes because it's really squinty and bright. Um, so we can um, put her in some, some uh, shade. So we got a spot here. Now, she's in shade, but what you have to be, come a little bit closer, um, you have to be careful. We still got some sunlight coming through. Uh, we could do the reflector again, or um, you know, but we can. We, we don't want this. I don't. I don't think that looks good on a photograph. We want nice, clean, even lighting. So um, we've got. Uh, all we need to do is really just move Kate to a few feet over here. And now, her face is. There's no. Uh, there's no highlights. There's no. Um, you know, we don't have sunlight hitting her face anywhere and it's, it's going to look great. So um, look for the good light. And sometimes it's trees, sometimes it's a big overhang. Um, I like photographing people where the main source of light is actually the open sky and not necessarily the direct sunlight. I'm going to take a shot and show you what we've got here. And again, uh, my camera might be telling me that it's, uh, again, too bright because it's picking up dark uh, bright things in the background so I'm gonna want to shoot in manual mode so that uh, I'm gonna get a correct exposure so we're gonna turn my camera on here and I'm also gonna put Keita in that third section there and we also talked about um, depth of field in our in our I'm not sure if it was I think it was our second it was our second uh, I've got a fairly shallow depth of field I'm shooting at f4 so that means that the aperture is fairly large. And what that's gonna do is it's going to make, um, uh, it's gonna put the background more out of focus. And I think that makes for a really lovely composition as well. So I've got Keita in good light. I've got her in one of the thirds for composition. And I've got the background out of focus, which will make Keita stand out even more. So we'll take a shot here. And we're almost done, Keita. <laughs> And you're going to see that we've got some lovely light and you'll see that the background's out of focus. Uh, let's go back in the shade where I will be in better light because I know the light on me is really crappy. But um, so that that kind of wraps up uh, our, our, um, our video. How's the light on me? Is it good? It's really good. Oh, good. Uh, I'm always concerned about the light. Uh, that wraps up our, our four modules on some basic photography skills. Um, this has been a really great exercise for me. I've actually learned a lot through this process. And uh, I encourage you to go on the Facebook page and uh, submit your photos. Uh, look for some feedback from, from uh, our colleagues and friends on the Facebook page and continue the learning. Most importantly, get your camera out there, get it into manual mode, have lots of fun, explore and take some amazing pictures. Thank you once again to the Vancouver Island Regional Library for making this opportunity possible. I want to thank Keita. Uh, our fabulous model, and my director and videographer, Ronnie Feganello, uh, for all the help. Thank you so much. Please uh, put your comments in the Facebook page, and I'll be happy to respond. Ciao for now. Take care.